Welcome to Hot Weekly. Hello, everyone. I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is Haunt Weekly, a weekly podcast we haunt to attract our entertainment community. Whether you're an actor, owner, or just plain aficionado, we aim to be a podcast for you. And we come to you this week from New Orleans. <laughs> just not that New Orleans, not the usual one. There's a floor to lay on the wall. That counts. Yeah, it's totally New Orleans. And then that's, that's a New Orleans balcony in the picture. <clears throat> We're staying at the New Orleans Inn in Missouri, about three hours south of St. Louis. We decided to stop for the night. And um, when the area we were looking at, we noticed there was a place called the New Orleans Inn. And yeah, we knew that risk of murder was high, but we at least <laughs> had to try. <laughs> Anyone who knows two things about me knows oh, I'm a gosh. sucker for this type of shit. Yeah, and uh, obviously we are a little uh, stir crazy. Uh, um, yes, we are recording <laughs> after Trans World. Trans World yes. concluded earlier today, mm-hmm. so we'll be talking about that the entire entirety of the episode. But yeah, <clears throat> it has been a very very long week. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And the first thing you should do, by the way, is find us at all the places that we exist because we've been posting stuff from Trans World. You can find us at hauntweekly.com, hauntweekly at Twitter, hauntweekly on Facebook, youtube.com slash hauntweekly, and of course, wherever you get your podcast from. We take great effort. By that, I mean we pay someone else to make sure that is available literally anywhere your ass stumbles onto. Exactly. That's the goal. We, if I could put this in your letterbox, I would. Yeah. But I can't do that. No, and neither can the service. No, no. But anyways, um, so yes, Trans World 2023 is in the books. And as you said, we are on the way home, about a third of the way home. Yeah. Decided to stop for the night. Got a room at the New Orleans Inn. Uh Uh-huh. So if the acoustics are different, that's what's wrong. If there's a train horn randomly halfway through this, (laughs) we just found out before we hit record that there is a train track apparently. This hotel is shit. I'm telling you straight. It it both is and it, isn't though. Uh, yeah, it is. I mean, I'll, I'll say this is super convenient and it feels super safe. Yeah, yeah, it it really does. We don't want to trash it too much. Yeah, um, no, it's actually not that bad. But yeah, don't necessarily expect a quiet night's sleep. Yeah, if you're someone sensitive to those things, eh, maybe <laughs> we yeah. consider. But, but anyway. But anyway, that's not the point. The point no. is today was the final day of Trans World 2023. Yes. And yeah. that and to that point, it was our first one. Yes. We got to go to Trans World as we announced about a month ago that we were kind of suddenly going. Yeah. We had never planned on going to Trans World, never really sought it out. No. Uh, but opportunity arose this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, we jumped at it and we're tired now because of that. That yeah. that decision made us very tired. Is yeah, an, and they'll come. Okay, good episode, everyone. Bye. Yeah, basically. Um, no, no, but I was there working the Conjured Media booth. Thank you, Alex, for bringing us along. Um, so I did not get to see a lot of the trade show floor. I didn't get the opportunity because um, it is tiring standing on your feet all day and talking to people. Um, yeah. Um, and that, that's kind of it. We ended up with two very different experiences. Yes. Yes, we did. <clears throat> I did more of the attendee thing. Yes. I came, I went, I cruised the floor a lot. Mm-hmm. And I, we did go, and you did go some around the floor. Yes, but I did. not nearly enough. No. Uh, and not, not nearly as much as you wanted and not nearly enough to see everything and to really take it in. Right. Um, but I did a lot of that. Mm-hmm. But you got to see a side of it that uh, not a lot of people do get to see. Right. The side of working a booth and interacting with people and seeing who's there and what mm-hmm. questions are going on and what's up. And so, yeah, we're not going to talk too much about Conjure Media stuff. That's their stuff, and we don't do that here. Right, exactly. But we can talk about that experience and what that was like. Exactly. I think that's a really good it's, thing to do. Yeah, because, I mean, <laughs> the main thing that... the came out was I got to talk to people and hear what they were looking for, even if it wasn't things that we could provide. Yeah. So I've got to say one thing I think is true for me 
is I may have overhyped Transworld in my head a little bit. Well, and I will say that it is not exactly what I expected it to yeah. be. Yeah. I think my expectations of Transworld were different from the reality. Because here's the thing. We've been to a lot of haunt cons, which mm-hmm. is a smaller show. But we've been to a lot of haunt cons, which has a lot of the same vendors. Right. And I've been to a lot of conferences, big, small, and otherwise. Right. And the reality of it is I think Alex actually kind of said it best. Uh-huh. Um, he, he said it is a small, big show. Yep. It is a big convention, but among the big conventions, it's a small show. Yeah. And I think that is incredibly accurate. It comes with a lot of the trappings and issues good and things good and bad with a large show. Mm-hmm. But it's a small show <laughs> yeah. in that category. And I agree with that completely. Like we're Haunt Con and I'm guessing MHC are probably more medium sized shows, mm-hmm. especially on the bigger conference platform. This one is definitely past the threshold into a big show, but only barely. <laughs> yeah. But what what was interesting, what was striking to me is how, I don't want to say it felt familiar, but how it was a conference. It yeah. was a conference. It was a trade show. Yeah. <clears throat> I really I, don't know how to put that, you know? I, yeah, I don't know what we were <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know either. Of course <laughs> it's a conference. Of course it's a trade show. That so, sounds stupid to say that yeah. in hindsight. Yeah, I will say that it seems like I was surprised at how many small vendors there were. Yeah. Because I thought it was going to be a show for all of the giant props. And there were some of those oh, there. Oh, that, that existed. Yeah, yeah. Um, And, like, things for haunted houses to buy. And that absolutely is what it is. Yeah, and that existed. But there were a lot of small vendors with uh, cash and carry. That I did not expect. And there were a lot of vendors that were not targeting haunts at all. Yeah. <laughs> they were literally printing t-shirts or... Yeah. Yeah, that's an issue into itself. We're going to get into it in a minute. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> but, so, to talk about the trade show floor, because that's obviously the reason we're all here. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um... You and I did the dark zone together. Yes. And apparently there was some kind of concern there wasn't going to be a dark zone. Mm-hmm. I'd heard that, and there was one. Yeah. I don't know. I and mean, see, the thing is, we have no frame of reference. No. I can't say if this was a huge dark zone or a small one. I can't mm-hmm. do that. But I can say that it was, as far as the trade show floor goes, the most impressive part. Yeah. And, like, I've seen the props that were in there online before, but just the size standing next to them really yeah, gets it's, on the it's scale. very different seeing it on a four-inch YouTube video on your laptop uh-huh. than it is to see it floating above your head. Exactly. Yeah, it was, it was impressive. Um, and one of the things that I did hear from a lot of people was that it was the biggest show with the most vendors that they've seen at Transworld. Because, you know, even if people came up to our booth and were uh, not interested uh, in the services, I would still ask them, you know, what do you like about the show? What's the best thing on the floor? You know, try to get them talking. So. Yeah, and that's the thing. I've been to other haunted attraction conventions. Mm -hmm. This is definitely the biggest. Yeah. And it is... Big, both in terms of the number of vendors mm-hmm. and in the size and scope those vendors bring. Yeah. Like, a good example is, like, when we saw Froggy's Fog at Hunters Against Hate, which is a very, very small conference. Mm-hmm. Tater had a table. There was a table for yeah. Froggy's Fog, and that was it. Yeah. Um, there basically was a six-foot table, and that. At Haunt Con, they had a 20-by-20 20 20 booth. Yeah. Big, but here they had, like, three 20-by-20 20 20 booths. Yeah. So the scope just increases. Mm-hmm. And that seems to be kind of the par for the course here, is that you both have more vendors and bigger, and the vendors going bigger mm-hmm. when they do come here. Yeah. Um, and I think, like I said, it was very interesting to see these upscale. Like a good example of this was Immortal Masks. Yeah. They were at Transworld. And they apparently brought, and I believe this, judging from the size of their booth, over 800 masks. Yeah. Yeah, it was incredible. It was incredible. And 
don't know why now I'm the one choking. <laughs> I was doing fine until like we started recording, of course, right? Yeah. Isn't that the way it always is? Mm -hmm. But anyways, the main thing like for me of the trade show floor, and the part that was, I guess, a little bit on the disappointing side was I didn't get the feeling that I saw anything that was the next new big thing in hauling. Yeah, and I didn't, and I checked social media and I didn't see any of the videos. Maybe I'm just in the wrong spot. You know, like, look at this awesome thing that we found, and I didn't see that this year. Like, okay, like, previously when that damn Pennywise animatronic blew up, mm -hmm. yeah, it pissed me off because the licensing is dubious, especially if you're trying to use it in a haunt. I mean, even if the, the vendor has a license, then doesn't yeah. mean you have the license yeah. to publicly display and perform it, you know? Mm -hmm. it, it, it gets complicated in a hurry. But even, but it, and I also just don't like the use of film characters and haunts anyway even and you did say that there were fewer of those this year yeah and that was one of the good things was that was way toned down like okay mortal masks had a few but i know for a fact they licensed theirs yeah once again still potential issues about using them in a haunt i don't know all the details of how they how far that license goes mm -hmm. basically i didn't Really want to push it extends the, to the buyer. Yeah, exactly. And what the buyer can do with it, yeah. as far as what they got from the film company, and and that's all well and good. But yeah, licensing. But as far as like vendors targeting haunts, there was almost no issues of copyrighted and trademark characters being used at all. It, it was almost all original stuff, and I did really, really like that. Mm -hmm. Now, like I was talking about earlier, there was the T-shirts. <laughs> And the, the vendors that were targeting, I guess you'd call them the booze in some mm -hmm. case, you know what I mean, the individuals there, um, they had a lot of questionable material. And in fact, I know one vendor at Transworld caught one of those t-shirt shops selling prints of that he made. Yeah, his artwork. <laughs> his artwork. And... Yeah, and, and he got him, got him to stop, and it all ended well. And it was basically, she bought, I mean, this is, the, it, it, it's so common, unfortunately. She bought this giant pack of images and on from whatever, and mm -hmm. his was one of them. Obviously, whoever assembled that pack of images didn't do any license clearance at all. Just grabbed whatever high-resolution images they could find and ship off. And that happens way mm -hmm. too much. Yeah. Yeah, but... Luckily, but anyways, there wasn't. A but yeah, lot I didn't like. I said I didn't get a hand on. This is the next big thing. Because mm -hmm. I really expected touring the floor to see something that really just made me go, "Bam! That's it. That's the next. That's the future." That's we'll what everybody's going to be sharing out. That's everyone's going to be sharing that out. I'm going to see that every fucking haunt this fall. I mean, you know, it's going to be everywhere. People are going to be sending it to us. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be everywhere. I, I, was, I was so assuming I would have that moment, mm -hmm. and I didn't. I saw a lot of cool stuff. I'm not trashing the stuff I saw. Do you think that um, that VR is going to be oh, big? You're setting me up. Huh? I am. <laughs> you're setting. Because this tray show convinced me. The VR, as it currently exists, is a dead end. Mm -hmm. And I am very sorry to the companies that were peddling VR there. I am now convinced, after seeing your things, VR is a dead end. And I'm, okay, Thursday. Mm -hmm. We had just gotten there. I'm doing my very first walk of the floor. I'm actually moving kind of quick. I'm just trying to get a feel of where everything is. That's what most people do the first day. <clears throat> I'm not really looking at stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm going through... And I get to where the Christmas show is, and the Christmas show had, or where the edge of the Christmas show was, a sleigh ride where you would ride on a sleigh that's moving around while wearing a VR headset. Mm -hmm. And the show hadn't really filled out yet. It was still, people were still like coming in. Yeah. So there wasn't a lot of people around. And I'm watching this, the, these four people on the sleigh ride, and two people are coming the opposite way from me, and they stop. They look at the sleigh ride, and they go, they look like fucking Pratt's. <laughs> and A, only I throw British insults here. <laughs> okay, don't steal my shtick, man. That, that's, that's rude. Second, you're fucking right. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay, like, we have two VR sets in our home. Yeah. 
we have a PlayStation VR for the PlayStation 4, and we have the, um, the Oculus. Oculus. Yeah. yeah. And I don't use it that much. No. I thought I would. Mm -hmm. I do enjoy it, but I don't use it that much because it's so inconvenient to use. You need, like, an acre of land around you and... Yeah. And in the clear space and if you want to be sitting down and be comfortable when you're doing your VR shit, well, you know, you gotta adjust the settings and you might be cracking your knuckles on the ground when you gotta pick something up low down. But mm -hmm. anyways, but so yeah, I just I, I've come to the conclusion I think VR as it is now is a dead end. Maybe AR with like smaller glasses and headsets can help things along, but VR as it is now, I just don't oh, know. I th there's too many issues with it. And even as a novelty, mm. I don't think it's, I just don't think it's there, man. I'm sorry. I mean, and the mm -hmm. thing is, like, we did a VR experience at uh, 13th Gate mm -hmm. when the last, not this we last did. year, but the previous time we were yeah. there. And it was all right. I, I mean, middling review. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it was definitely not as good as the 13th Gate. No, no. <laughs> then again, it was only about seventh of the price of the 13th Gate. So yeah. there's that. Um, and they added some elements to it, like yeah. spraying water on you when you were yeah. in a wet zone. And then it was not just a VR experience. And yeah. also, in that VR experience, you were in a room alone. Mm -hmm. Or just with the worker. I mean, I'm, I don't know. I had the goggle on. I couldn't see. Yeah. You were not in a public setting. Right. Which, that, yeah, after looking at people using VR, it's like, oof, this is awkward. <laughs> Yeah, you, you, it, it's 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 like catching someone in an intimate moment you didn't want to catch him in. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Well, I guess we'll see. But one thing I did find interesting too is there's actually three shows. We haven't even talked about that part. No. There, theoretically, <laughs> there are three shows. Yeah. There's the Halloween show. Then there's the Room Escape game and everything else show. It used to be just the Room Escape show. Yeah. But that is the Room Escape element of it has severely curtailed. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I talked to several people who were disappointed about that. You know, we talked recently about the issues in the room escape industry. I am not shocked. It's an it's an industry in contraction, and this is a place where the companies that help build and found mm -hmm. escape rooms are. And those companies, they lose out first, you know. Yeah. So people stop building before they start closing. And as we talked about, about 10% of room escapes, have cl permanent room escapes, have closed in the past, in like the pre, in the year, like twenty between, I think it was twenty twenty one and late twenty twenty two. So, yeah, it's it's a it's rough for that industry right now. Um, and then there's the Christmas show. Now people were referring to the Room Escape Zone since it was directly in the middle as the Thanksgiving section. Yes, that was kind of perfect. Thank you, Christian, for leading that way and then helping us get that started. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we tried to help propel that forward. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was really fucking funny. It was. Because, <laughs> yeah, he was literally stuck between a giant pumpkin and a Santa Claus, wasn't he? Yeah, exactly. Or the pumpkin and the tree. Yeah, the pumpkin and the tree. That was the tree, not the Santa Claus. You're right. Yeah. But, yeah, he was literally stuck between two. It's like, man. But, yeah, that the Christmas display, real fast, we'll come back around. The Christmas display was really, really good. Um, I actually enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, and I can't say anything to it because I never made it that far. I just want to say it had a lot of spectacle, uh -huh. a lot of very big light displays, a lot of big things. There was a uh, giant 70-foot-ish, I don't know how tall it actually was, lighted Christmas tree with um, a bar inside. Yeah, I did see that from a distance. Yeah. It had a bar. You could not miss it. <laughs> like anywhere you were in there, except the dark zone, um, you could see the at least the top of the tree. Yeah, um, it, it was pretty much the landmark to navigate by. Honestly, it was so tall. Yeah, exactly. And the few um, things that I did <laughs> see that were Christmassy would be super easy to change into a horror scene. Yeah, there was one place. Um, that was doing, and I didn't get their name, and I feel bad about it, mm -hmm. um, but they were doing Christmas animatronics. And it included three, I swear to God, they're just taxidermied reindeer. Mm -hmm. That's what they are. Um, singing and talking, singing Christmas carols. Yeah. And because they're supposed to look like they're sticking their heads out of the barn or something like that. Yeah. But they're just fucking taxidermied reindeer. Don't, don't lie to me. <laughs> 
And they're singing, and they're so happy. And they're disembodied. <laughs> Just heads on a wall. Yeah, that's um pretty interesting. It, it was a it was a definite choice. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, and like you said, I actually took a video of it and said this is the legit creepiest thing in a trans world. Yeah. And I, I think I stand by that. Yeah. Just because I and I, and I think that's because it was unintentionally creepy. Mm -hmm. They weren't trying to be. They were trying to be happy and fun and jovial, and it was just fucking nuts. Yeah. It was deeply unsettling to watch. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was... Yeah, I, I really did enjoy the Christmas show. I didn't think I would. But it's a huge spectacle, and, you know, I really do think that Christmas events, whether they're horror events or traditional events, are going to be a big frontier for haunted attractions. Yeah, and I think that, you know, we're probably, after talking, going to try to check some of the traditional ones out. Even though we are not Christmas people at all. No, just go and listen to our specials and you will know that we are not Christmas people. Like, And I'm choking on my words as I'm praising the Christmas section. Not because the vendors or anything were bad, but because I hate Christmas, you hate Christmas, we all hate Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody who got that reference, <laughs> please write us at hauntweekly.com, hauntweekly on Twitter, hauntweekly on Facebook, and youtube.com slash hauntweekly. Let us know that someone else got that. Yeah. Uh, but anyways. <laughs> um, but getting back to the, the room escape section. Mm -hmm. What I did notice, there was only a handful of vendors there that were dealing with building or managing a like a permanent new room escape. Yeah. Well, and I actually had an interesting conversation with a gentleman who owns two room escapes and is adding a haunted house. And he's like, yay, yeah, opposite day. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is so but, backwards. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know. I don't even know where to go with that. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's, I, I, it usually I, I, works I, I, the other I, way around. I'm sitting here picturing your brain just going, <laughs> wait, what? Eh? Yeah, well, I, I'm able to, like, Keep a straight face. Yeah. Keep going. But, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm surprised your brain just didn't like snap, throw the timing belt, and. Well, <coughs> I was just honest and said I've never heard it working that way, but. No, I've never heard anyone go that order. I mean, if someone else has, please let us know once again. All the well, all the aforementioned places. And it may be because you know the room escapes are tapering off. Yeah. And that's that's kind of the gist of this part of the conversation is that. You know, it was such a small section, and I heard many, many people complaining about it. It's it's the industry, though. It's not anything Trans World did or didn't no, no, do. No, no, no. It's the industry, man. I mean, I don't yeah. know what to tell you. But here's the thing: what was there in Spades were mobile or temporary room escape experiences. Yeah. There was one company, I believe, it was called Mega. Um. And what they did is they provided a wide variety of temporary room escape ex well, te what variety of temporary experiences. They did mostly inflatables, but I think they also had some tent-based ones where you uh -huh. set up and tear down a tent. But inflatables. And they had one I remember that was very interesting. It was a, an, a single inflatable with four different room escapes and a lobby in it. Mm -hmm. It was massive, obviously. Hmm. They also had um, ones with just two room escapes in it, and it and they had a uh, inflatable maze. Which okay, that was kind of lame. I'm not going to lie, but I was. But it was very interesting to me because you had them there. You had another company that did room escapes and trailers, including one trailer with two different five minute room escapes in mm -hmm. it. Um, and you had a company, that, another company that did the tent ones, and all I can think is, wow. This is an interesting push because while I think if you're building a new permanent room escape, you know, today you're an idiot. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> you're just laying it out there. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm sorry. The industry is in active contraction. It got overfull between like 2016, 2019, and then it was already starting to suffer from overexposure and saturation. Mm -hmm. Then COVID hit. Yeah. And that was just dick kick city. Um yeah. And now the industry is needing to sort of find its new normal. Exactly. I don't think now's the time to build a new one. 
unless you have a market that is really somehow starved for. And if you can find a market in these United States that is starved for room escapes. I will tell you the market. Oh, go ahead. I'm, 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 I'm here for it. Alaska. Well, apparently another star for haunts now. Yes, because I taught someone who opened a haunt in Alaska, and everybody came, and now and it's they also helped by the fact there ain't fucking shit to do in Alaska. That's what they said. <laughs> I mean, it's Alaska. They literally pay people to live there. Uh huh. That is actually true. But I bet room escapes would go over well there because they're indoors. You know, it might actually be. I have no idea how many room escapes there are in, in Anchorage or whatever. I have no idea either. I guess I should have looked that up before I threw it Before you were shot out your mouth off one? <laughs> yeah, this but, is definitely a shoot from the hip episode. Yeah. Now, a lot of this is an initial impressions. Yeah. I'm sure we're going to be dealing more and more with trans world over the next few weeks. Oh, yeah. So we'll have more in-depth stuff and more. This is just us on the way home talking about trans world. Just two idiots. Who are trying to process the show. In a hotel room, trying to get their show out on time. <laughs> yeah, and, and trying to beat the next train that yeah. passes by the fucking hotel. Anyway. <laughs> I swear to shit, nobody lives out here. Why is there a fucking train track here? No. I Anyways, don't know. moving on. But I do think this idea of the temporary and the, the um, movable escape games is really interesting. It is. And you mentioned to me that... Um, they you were able to, or companies were able to rent them. Yes. They offered rents and leases. And I don't know the terms. I was gonna look that up. And mm-hmm. I'll do that later and we'll come back at this, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. But it'd be really, really cool if the, they could rent it for like four months, September through December. That way you can do your Halloween and your December show. Yep. It'd be really great. Yeah. To just be able to do that and not have to invest because even the inflatable rooms mm-hmm. were incredible. We're still like over ten thousand dollars. Yeah. These were not cheap. No. Um, but I think if you could rent it for a period of time, you might be able to get an immediate profit off that investment. And even if, you know, you only do it one year, even if you only operate it one year, mm-hmm. you still get that little bit of extra revenue generation. I think that could be great. I, I, I think this is a potential winner. I also really like the, the, the booth that was near Conjured, a company called Mad Props, yeah. had a whole slew of not escape rooms, no. But games with escape room elements is the way I can best describe it. Yeah. The uh, the one that brought the most attention was... Well, it's kind of <laughs> unfucking avoidable. Yes, and I'm getting to that. Uh, there were four simulated electric chairs where you sit down and the first person... I love that you feel the need to say they're simulated electric chairs. Well, yeah. Um... <laughs> Didn't I gonna rock up the real one... <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Anyway. Uh, you okay? The first person who um, escaped did not get... The, the buzz. The buzz. And it's a violent buzz. Yeah, it like shakes the entire floor. You, and literally, um, to give you an idea of how loud this is, this was over by you. Uh-huh. I could hear it at the Christmas show, which is probably a good thousand feet away. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I could hear it about a thousand feet away. I could still hear it. Yeah, there were lots of people going, What, what the fuck that? is that? And trying to find it and asking people, and gr- Where's the buzz? And, and granted, <laughs> that convention center, it's a big open convention. Yeah. Noise travels like a motherfucker. But, oh, yeah. So, so it's helped us. smoke rings, by the way. Just yeah, there were up. several, there were two, at least two or three companies doing smoke rings. And they were having smoke ring all where they were like seeing how far they could get them to go. Yeah, I know. It was weird. Um, that's apparently just a recurring theme uh-huh. at Transworld. Um, but yeah, they had these mini experiences, like the four electric chairs. They had one where you put your hands in these guillotine-like things. Mm-hmm. Um, they had a variety of these types of games and puzzles that are meant to be just a little short, two to five minute things that you mm-hmm. do. Don't require a separate building. Mm-hmm. And someone um, described them as um, escape room appetizers. Yeah, exactly. Or escape room flavors, or you know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I think that's actually pretty apt because it's true. Yeah. But I could still see selling, you know, tickets, you know, bring your team of four for ten dollars yeah. to play this electric chair game or whatever. What about using the smaller ones in the queue line? Oh yeah, using the smaller ones in the queue line. Just they did have some that were able to be on a wall, 
where you could like play with a marble in a yeah. game that you spun around and things like that. Marble maze. But a marble on. maze. It's a marble maze and like a it, ship's wheel. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, things like that. <sighs> but yeah. But I think that was a very interesting idea. The idea of the mobile. And they also had, um, like, the, going back to Mega, they had inflatable games. Like, they had, don't laugh too hard, <coughs> inflatable axe throwing. Uh-huh. Because the axes were actually also inflatables, and they used Velcro. Um, and they also had an archery thing. They had a bunch of little games like that. Mm-hmm. That looked interesting and were once again temporary and portable and I'm assuming rentable and leasable. Yeah, and even if they aren't, they're storable. Yeah. They like I, I really think this could be something for haunts that are in out of the way spaces that can't justify a year round escape room. Mm-hmm. But may be able to justify a temporary one while the haunts open. Or for <laughs> a haunt that wants to test the waters into building a midway. Mm. Because then yeah. you could you could do that. You could put up some of these things and try it out. And if it works, then invest for the next yeah, year. Yeah, then as time moves know. on, build it out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, I can see that. That makes a lot of sense, too. I think those are both good ideas. I, I was actually really interested. And there was also one that brought it up on trailers. Um, I These were all interesting ideas in these temporary portable rooms. I know they've been a thing for a while. Mm-hmm. But if you look sh- purely at floor space at the show, yeah, it is clear the direction of the industry is toward the temporary, you know, the event vent ones rather than the permanent ones. Yeah, that's clearly the direction of the industry, and that was very fascinating to me. And I feel very bad for the people who attended the show mm-hmm. and got like three actual. <laughs> Room escape vendors, yeah. I feel very bad for you because, yeah, they did get hosed and there were not a lot of companies there doing that stuff. Mm-hmm. But I I think the direction of the future there was clear. Yeah. Like, I may not have learned much about the future of haunting, but I learned a lot about the future of escape games. Yeah. That that was a definite, okay, There there's clearly something going on here. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I had my... Take on me moment, you know, the aha moment. Uh huh. <laughs> but <Ba-da-ta>. a <laughs> Yes. Um, about that. That that hit like a ton of bricks. Um it was uh, like I said, that was fascinating. Um, as far as other things that really stood out, one of the things I did enjoy was looking at a lot of the vendors, especially on like three hundred side, which is all the way near the dark zone. Because one thing you notice about transfer, one thing I didn't know, is that um the Lower the number, the more established they are, basically. Mm-hmm. They've booked their place and they've been there a while. Yeah. So, like, your Froggy's Fog, mm-hmm. you know. Um, fright Props. Yeah, Fright Props. They're all in, like, the 300s. Uh, Scare Factory and Poison Pops are both in the dark zone, so they're 100 and 200. Because mm-hmm. um, 100 and 200 was a dark zone. And that's one thing you notice is all the, like, the companies that have been around forever are in the early ones. Mm-hmm. Um it was really, really interesting looking at the stuff, but I was very happy to see a lot of companies there that were selling these skeletons mm-hmm. of animatronic props, of even, even you know, full-on um, air compressor-powered props. Yeah. And it was great because those were actually fairly affordable, even to someone like us. Mm-hmm. And we can dress up a skeleton. We can. We're not bad at that. We actually know how to do that. And so I seriously considered picking some of those, picking one or two of those up, even though they were still, I mean, we're still talking four hundred, five hundred dollars on a lot of these. Mm-hmm. Pick, but compare that to the full prop, which is often four thousand, five thousand, six thousand, a little order of magnitude higher. I saw an opportunity for us there to actually have some animatronic props if we wanted to get into that. Yeah, and and after last year, mm-hmm. with the actor shortage in our haunt because we lost a lot of people. Thanks um, to all of our difficulties. Yeah, and a few family deaths right around Halloween. Yeah. Um, you know, and the success of Dancing Santa scaring the crap yeah, out of people. Jesus Christ. I'm looking at animatronics as a possibility. It's you know? a way to supplement, not necessarily yeah. replace. Oh, no, no, no. Never replace. But, yeah. you know, to fill in dead spots, sure, why not? 
Uh, yeah, I can definitely see some merit in that. And I, that, I think, showed a path that we can use to get into the higher, the, the middle tier, at least, of the animatronic game yeah. without, you know, completely emptying our savings account. Yeah. Um, so let's step away from the trade show floor. We're, we're, at a, we're at a point in this episode. I can't see the timer. Yeah, we got about 15 more minutes left. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about the uh, stuff around it. Okay. Uh, first thing is, we got to meet a lot of you wonderful people out there. Yes, thank you so much. All of you who came by, who said hello. Um, there are a lot. I gave out 22 monsters, and that was not enough. Because <laughs> there were more people I wanted to give to. But yeah, was, we know. Okay, we know, we know, we know we didn't get to everyone. And if yeah. you're one of the people we didn't see, it's a huge conference. Yeah. We I'm did sorry. our best. We really yeah. did. To get around to everyone, and it just, it was, it's yeah. too, it's big, it's too big. Yeah. We couldn't. No. There was too many of y'all. Yeah. We're overwhelmed, man. Yeah. No, but we, we but really was, did make an effort to get to everyone, but I know we did not, and I feel bad about several people we just didn't run into. In some cases, it's genuinely, we didn't run into them. Yeah, and we didn't know that you were there until after. Yeah, and, oh. and one, at least one person, I'm not naming names, uh, posted something that I saw on the drive down here. Yeah. I'm like, oh, shit, they were there? <laughs> exactly. Um, God damn it! I'd like to have met them. But yes. Uh, but we met several of you. And Apparently we met down near two dozen. <laughs> including several of you that are often in the comments. So thank you so much for your support, for continuing the conversation um, yeah. and coming to meet us. Uh, but let's see. The other thing to talk about is the nightlife aspect of it. Hmm. We did not do any of the parties they had. Not really. No, none, none, none of the official ones. Oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> so that's the thing that I have learned, is that there are a lot of unofficial parties. And that and this seems to be a thing with conferences of a certain size. Mm-hmm. And I think Trent, this is how I know Transworld got into that big side. Yeah. Because there are people, we're not naming names, but I think you know who I'm thinking of, who do Transworld every year, but they do it badgeless. Yeah. <laughs> Meaning they uh, come and they attend the events around the conference, but not the conference itself. Yeah. And with a big enough conference, you can actually truly do that. Yeah. Exactly. Um, like South yes. by is an in thing to do, actually. Exactly. So, supposedly that's a hip and trendy thing to do at South by, and I, I'm sure the organizers of South by Southwest just love the shit out of that. Yeah. That's their favorite thing in the fucking universe. Yeah. But no, no, but no. Um, the Marriott that's right across the street, the convention center, mm-hmm. that is Ground Zero. Yeah. Yes. And I did not realize that was Ground Zero. I want to talk about what we would do different later. Mm-hmm. If we go when when and if we go back, yeah. Um, but one of the more immediate things is have a we now have a better understanding of this. That that lobby mm-hmm. at the Marriott is is Boo Central. Yeah, it's gathering of the Juggalos, but hot. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing missing is the wrestling ring. <laughs> well, you know, you've got the basement that's surrounded on all sides. That's true. It's you could have a nice little the, cage uh, match going there. But yeah, no, it, um, we did not have a full grasp on that. Like, we knew that that was a, an important thing. Yeah, we also didn't know, like, we should bring our own booze. <laughs> yeah. And like I said, we'll do the full uh, things we would change. But we really did have a great time hanging out at the Marriott. We unfortunately could not stay uh-huh. as late as we wanted in many cases. Right. Or get as drunk as we wanted. Because you were working the booth. Mm-hmm. We had to be our we had to drag our whatever asses back to that trade show floor at ten a.m. Yeah, with the latest by ten a.m. by ten a.m. Usually nine thirty. Yeah, and nine thirty comes really fucking early when you've been up to three a.m. drinking. Yeah, exactly. And we were also not staying anywhere in that area. We actually stayed in a great place. Yeah, I'm extremely happy with where we stayed. We stayed in a um, Airbnb, and I hate Airbnbs. Yes. I, I really, really hate that we had to do this, but we were literally back against the wall on this one. Yeah. If we wanted to go to this, we had no choice. Mm-hmm. We only looked at Airbnb out of sheer desperation. Trust me. Yeah, I called several hotels. <clears throat> yeah, and she talked to people. I know. 
On the phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyways, we had an Airbnb in Soulard, which is about five minute drive away. Yeah. But it's in a completely different neighborhood. And that neighborhood is amazing. It is. If, if you like metal, they have a metal bar with metal karaoke Mondays. And it's a metal nerd bar, too. Because, yes. And it's great food there, too. We actually ate uh, our last meal in St. Louis there because we had a second meal there. Yeah. Because it was that good. There's also McGurry's and the Mc world. The Me huh? McGurk's. McGurk's. Yeah, sorry. McGurk's. Ah. I did. Uh, the nation's largest Irish pub and one of the oldest. Yeah. And it is fucking amazing. Yes. And then, you know, you've got a bunch of other smaller restaurants and bars in that area that we didn't get to go to. Mm -hmm. um, it is just an amazing neighborhood. We were able to, I mean, basically, if I can't live in New Orleans, I think I want to live in Soulard now. Yeah. I really do. I mean that. And that's saying something. No, yeah, it, really it really is. But the downside of it was we weren't able to just stumble to our hotel room. And get up. And at the same time, no nine fifty five and run yeah. across the street. Exactly, we couldn't do that. We had to Uber or drive in. Now, luckily, we had no trouble realistically finding parking. Yeah. In fact, there was a street right next to that Marriott mm -hmm. that always had parking. Yeah. City parking, just curb parking. Mm -hmm. But whatever, you know. Um, we never had trouble finding parking, luckily. But um, we either had to drive in or Uber in. And that just added to the suck to too because like, yeah, I get it. We go home at one a.m. Yeah. Um, on Saturday night, mm -hmm. I get it. The party's really just starting. Mm -hmm. But we have obligations, unfortunately. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that was a really cool scene, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um. Huh. <sighs> so. Talk a little bit about the venue itself. Okay, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Because we it was weird. It's weird and problematic. Yeah. I get the feeling that the convention center doesn't like Trans World. Yeah, and, and I got the same one. Because as a vendor, you expect to have your own entrance and exit at all times. Um, it closed at 10. Yeah. You could not get in. You could get out, but you couldn't get in through that same door. Yeah. Um, so there was only one entrance and exit for everyone. Yeah. And they only had two people mm -hmm. scanning badges at any point. Exactly. So, like, there would be times, like, especially on, especially on, like, Thursday and Friday, but right by the opening. Yeah. Where the line is, like, pretty much back to Washington Street. Mm-hmm. And there's these two little ladies with shitty-ass scanners yeah. trying to scan people in. And that was bad because if you had a vendor badge and they were trying to scan you most of the time it wouldn't scan because they were printed wrong yeah the vendor badges were printed terribly they were cut off and they were printed on a blue background that made it difficult for the scanners yeah and um so a few of the days at least because it was such an early show it was very cold outside mm -hmm. and you had to play Basically, Russian roulette with the doors on whether or not they would open. Yeah, I mean, the front of the convention center has like two dozen or so doors. I'm There's more than that. Three do It has dozens of doors. Dozens, yes. Yeah, we'll just say dozens. And about two thirds of them that were not in the dead center yeah. didn't open. Yeah. And which ones did and did not open? There was no signs indicating it. Nope. You just walk up and try to make yourself seen by the little sensor bar thing. Yeah. And it would, oh, you and if it would either open or not, it was like playing fucking Fall Guys. Mm -hmm. We're trying to toward. It's like, ugh, that sucked. And then when we're trying to unload, yeah. um, the convention center is actually set up very well for unloading and loading and unloading of mm -hmm. this stuff. They have these giant doors they can raise and lower. They have several of them up and down the mm -hmm. line. They only opened two of the four yeah. that would have been usable by us. And we asked, like, hey, can we open this one, too? So we can, like, wheel shit out here because our, our van was, like, right there. Yeah. And it's like, oh, nope, you are only allotted these two. How the fuck do you only allot two open doors? How yeah. do you allot open doors, period? You don't yeah. allot open doors. They're not swinging doors. And a jukebox. <laughs> and a bar stool. <laughs> a lot of musical references this episode. 
and a flashing neon sign. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Anyways, but but no, it's just like don't fucking allow, you're just opening a door. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. And it so doesn't. yeah, it like the venue was to my mind the worst aspect of this. Yeah. And it's I just agree. because they were not doing well. I mean, I've got issues with with how trans, some things Transworld did too. And well, I'm sure we'll kind of wrap up on that, or we'll touch that before we wrap up. Mm-hmm. But the venue, the lack of any desire to make this more efficient or mm-hmm. make this easier on anyone, it felt like they were going out of their way to make it less convenient for visitors and exhibitors alike. You know, mm-hmm. it really did because I'm pretty sure it's easier to open that fucking door than. And keep telling people, no, it has to stay closed. Mm-hmm. You know? It's just like, like, yeah, they're putting extra work into it. And I do not understand why this hallway had so many ways that you could go in and out of it, but only one that was open. Yeah. It just it felt unnecessary. Now, I really, if, if we do Transworld uh, next year, one of my big hopes is that Transworld gets its digital shit together mm-hmm. because that's an area they need to really step up. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. There's just like a good example is if you wanted to do uh, any of the seminars, mm-hmm. A had to pay separate, which is we're getting to that. But, but you got a ticket, you had to get a physical ticket that that was then scanned. Yeah. And it should just all be. Why is it not attached your to your code? badge and your QR code? Yeah. That's that's the obvious one. Yeah, it's like wait a minute. Um, yeah, that doesn't make any goddamn sense. Mm-mm. Um, the mobile website for Transworld is stonking useless. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a, it has some issues. It, it, well, the big some one big I ones. had was the map. Yeah, for the trade show floor. They want to do these fancy modern app where you can click and see what everything is and all that mm-hmm. and play speak and spell with the goddamn map. And it looks cool, I'm sure, on desktop. Yeah. But on your phone, it is utterly useless. And that is how I'm trying to navigate the trade show floor. I'm not going to navigate the trade show floor with a laptop on my arm. Mm-hmm. I'm not one of those dorks. Yeah. Um. But yeah, um... That they need to get the digital game together, and I really don't like the nickel and diming that Transworld does. Mm-hmm. It's like you pay to attend or exhibit. In our case, mm-hmm. we were part of an exhibitor package, um, and then if you want to attend the seminar, it's X amount. You want to attend the party, it's Y amount. Yeah, that's why I think if we come again, we're going to try to do a talk of some sort. Mm-hmm. Yeah, speakers are allowed in. Yeah. But that was super frustrating because, like, one of the talks, we didn't know if we were going to be able to break away to do it. Yeah. Until, like, 20 minutes, like, five minutes or 10 minutes before. And so, we're like, oh, okay, we can go. Everything's a little quiet. And beeline out the door, and we can't even get in. We can't even buy a ticket at the door. No. No, you have to go and stand in line at the registration booth to get the ticket and then go over. And by that time, we would have been late and we're not interrupting. Yeah, we're interrupting talks. our friends talking. That's just rude. Yeah, we, we didn't know if we'd be able to do it, so we didn't buy the ticket previously because, yeah. you know, we didn't want to spend, I think it was 65 bucks for each of each, us yeah. um, on a something we were not 100% sure we'd be going to. But it said, oh, yeah, you can you can register on site. It's fine. Mm-hmm. So we just assumed we could rock up and pay there. And that just... That was sucked. I, I mean, that's one of the things I really did like about Haunt Con was you paid one ticket price, you got the trade show floor, you got all the seminars and lectures, yeah. and you got the party mm-hmm. for one price. And the parties were extra, too. The City Museum party, the Dead Man's Ball was extra. Mm-hmm. Everything is an add-on. It just it feels like they're the spirit airlines of conferences. Oh, I was I was thinking in video game terms of the, uh, uh, the micro transactions. If sixty five bucks is a fucking micro transaction, we got problems. Depends on what your budget is. <laughs> Fair point. So yeah, that was frustrating. But overall, I mean, I did have a good time. I'm not. Yeah, I, 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 I don't want the, like the ending to be like super negative. No, no, no. 
no, it was a good time. I think if you're able to go, you should go. Yeah. Um, I mean, we had fun. We had a lot of fun networking and, like we said, meeting fans. Um, and meeting a lot of new people, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, met a lot of new people um, roaming around. And it was funny because our booth was across from Zombie Army. Oh, Jesus so Christ. <laughs> we got to watch that. Um, hey, we got to see John LaFlame Boy at work. We got to see him in his element. Mm-hmm. And we got to see the entirety of the Zombie Army crew in their element. Yes, shout out. Beaker. <laughs> yes, shout out to Beaker for uh, keeping that ship running. <laughs> Look, Transworld's a shit show, and you kept the turds flowing the same direction. Good job. Yep. <laughs> um, so, yeah, but here's the thing, though. Is like, we were like struggling to set up our booth, and <laughs> our booth was easy. It was. Realistically, like that should not have been anything. No. We, we actually were better at it by Teardown, I have to admit. Yeah. We did a lot better on the Teardown side. But I remember, I'm like, I look up, oh, zombie armies have across from us. That's cool. I go down, I put like a few more floor tiles down for our booth. I look up, they have a fucking booth built. Yeah. You, I mean, A, the army in zombie army is quite literal. I assure yes. you of that part. <laughs> they are very much an army. Yeah. And they moved. I mean, and one of the things I liked was they had a lot of people, and nobody was doing a lot. Yeah. Everybody was doing something. Everybody was doing their thing, but it was not a lot. Mm-hmm. Nobody was being overloaded. In fact, I overheard many times, don't overload yourself. You know, take it easy. Do this together. Get an extra person to help you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like... A, Shit. Uh, too bad we only had three people for this fucking movie. <laughs> hey, can okay. we can we pay you a hundred bucks? No, no. no we we got it done. We did get it done. It, and it actually came out really well and came out really nice, despite the efforts of the pop ups <laughs> to ruin everything. Yeah, that's yeah. a talk for another day. Yeah, it is. But yeah, we ended up getting through it and it was a great show. I think everyone's yeah. happy with how it went. I really enjoyed it. Um I know you didn't get to experience the show yeah the way you wanted but i think you have a lot of interesting perspective now because you talk to a lot more people than i did i did talk to a lot of people and i've got a lot of the uh i feel like i've got the pulse on the concerns of the small haunter so we're going to be i'm sure this is stuff that's going to be feeding future episodes mm-hmm. and in future discussions so this we yeah. got a lot more about trans world to talk i would say probably over the next 10 years I mean, yeah, and we've got, you know, people that have agreed to come on and be interviewed, and yep. we've reached out to them, so watch for those in the next couple of months. I know we always say that we're going to have guests on, but we've talked to them in person. So and we, now we're, like, double committed. <laughs> we're, like, in-person pinky swear committed type thing. We're in trouble now if we don't do it. Yeah. They'll come beat much. us up. Yeah. <laughs> in some cases, it's probably true. <laughs> Not many of them from NOLA. Uh, but, you know, pe- people fly into New Orleans all the time. You're aware of this, right? Nope. <laughs> there is no airport in New Orleans. I'm in I have New no Orleans. Idea. What are you talking about? Oh, There's yeah, we're in here. New Orleans. <laughs> I forgot. We are in New Orleans. Oh, my God. Anyways, <clears throat> so that is not a thorough overview of Trans World, but no, I don't no, think no. any 50 minute conversation is going to be. It's just, it's just, it, we'll, we'll take that as the 10,000 foot overview. Yeah, and we will come back to these topics in more detail over the coming weeks. We have a lot more to discuss, and I'm sure your conversations are going to produce uh, turn out to be very illuminating in the next few weeks. <laughs> I have now gotten so tired of lost the power of speech. Oh, interesting. That's that's not good for a podcast. No, right? it is not. So we should probably wrap this up. Right. So live from New Orleans. <laughs> we like to say thank you very much for joining us for the past near hour or so. We greatly appreciate you. And thank you to everyone who came, said hi, gave us compliments, said sweet things to us. Guys, i got to be honest, a lot of you had us on the border of tears. Yeah. Hearing about you know, how much you enjoyed it and the impact we were having. It gets lonely on this end of the microphone. It really does. And I... It's been a while since I've been around people who tell us that side of it. Yeah. It, it, it gets lonely here, and we don't always get that, mm-hmm. that much feedback. We get a lot of great feedback on the question of the week, mm-hmm. which we don't have this week. No. I guess I'll make up one. Uh, what did you do at Transworld? What was your, <laughs> what was your highlight from Transworld? There you go. Boom. Uh, question of the week taken care of. Fine. But no. 
the point is, though, we really do appreciate um, you all reaching out to us, shaking your hands, and talking to us face to face like that. It meant more than realistically we could ever ever explain. Yes, and now we have faces to go with all of those names in the comments. Yeah, I mean it's it's wonderful, and that to me I think is going to be the real takeaway from Trans World is those moments. But since we have, you know. 370 plus episodes to do apparently um <laughs> you know we're, we're going to have to focus on other elements of the conference to have ideas to talk about yeah. but we did want to say thank you for that yes thank but you. please if you are new here and we're not one of the ones or maybe we met you and now you're listening welcome aboard yeah we sit here and ramble for an hour you have a you're lot welcome. of content you can listen to <laughs> i don't recommend listening to it all at once that would be bad. Yeah. For and your the health. first ones are rough. I'm just yeah. going to tell you. Oh, they're all rough. <laughs> just shut up and quit pretending like they get better. <laughs> Sometimes. But we greatly appreciate you, too. Check us out at all the places we exist hauntweekly.com, Haunt Weekly on Twitter, Haunt Weekly on Facebook, youtube.com slash Haunt Weekly, and wherever finer podcasts are distributed. Until next time, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And we will see you all next week where it is an episode divisible by four. No, it isn't. It isn't. Yeah, it is. No. Yes, it is. It actually is. I don't remember what episode we're on. Now you're wanting me to do math at 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> oh, come on. After driving. <laughs> but anyways, we'll see you all next week. It's probably the news. <laughs>